Good morning. Welcome to this third Sunday in Easter. I'm Pastor John Robson. I'm concerned with visitation and those kind of services while Pastor Barry is off on some needed R&R. So welcome and may our worship service this very day leave you uplifted and willing to go out into this world to share the love of Christ. Amen. Good morning. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. Now is the time to sing, to sing the good news of God, who awakens us with dawn's embrace, 
who surrounds us with joy and life. Now is the time to offer praise to God in every place, with every voice, to rejoice in the one who leads us through each moment with a gentle hand and a word of hope. Now is the time to join all creation in extolling God, from the depths of the sea to the farthest galaxies. We will sing the good news of Easter. We will rejoice in the God who loves us. Please join me in the call to confession. We can hold on to hurt until our hands begin to cramp and keep holding. Though they bow our back, we refuse to set our grudges down because we don't know what it would feel like to have that weight off us. And we think that is the way God operates as well. But God's anger lasts for just a moment, while the grace, the forgiveness, and the hope God offers never goes away. Let us dare to bring our prayers to the one who hears us and heals us as we pray together, saying, Now that Easter is done and gone, Holy One, we no longer hear the special music, but listen to temptation's familiar refrains. We no longer walk those straight paths of joy and wonder, but wander the crooked streets to our old haunts. Rather than living in the newness you bring, we do things the way they have always been done. Fortunately, God of seaside breakfasts, you know the way out of our messy lives, and so take us by the hand to lead us. You wipe our busy schedules off our calendars so we may spend more time with those who need our love and attention. You challenge us to fish from the other side of our worries so we may pull in all the grace, wonder, and mercy offered to us by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Join with me in our assurance of pardon. Why should we weep? Joy comes to us this morning and every moment of our lives. The Lamb of God has come to share mercy and hope with us so we can praise our God with joyous hearts. We will lift glad songs of joy for all the blessings God has given to us. We will offer our hearts and hands in love to serve others. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen, amen. Our scripture lesson is from Revelation 5, verses 11 to 14. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne, and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom, and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. Let us come together in a time of prayer. We have heard joys and concerns, and we need to offer them to God. For the church universal, 
we ask God's help and guidance. We ask his vision for us as we seek new ways to share the good news. And for our own church, we also ask God's blessing and counsel that we as members and our leadership may be bowing to the Lord God each day, seeking guidance. For the planet Earth, of which we are the stewards, going back to the book of Genesis, we know that we have to take care of Mother Earth, the Mother Earth of the whole world and the Mother Earth that's just in our own yards and gardens. We ask God to give us guidance. We ask God to give us, hear our prayers for the sick, those whose bodies are ailing, those whose minds may feel isolated and lonely. They may feel lost. We ask the Lord God to help us to reach out to our friends and neighbors, to pick up a phone and give a call, to send a note. But Lord, help us. Help us to remember those whose bodies and minds struggle. Lastly, Lord, we pray for the lost. All of us have been in that category. Some of us may be a bit lost. Help us, Lord, to reach out to our friends and to say, I've been there. I hear you. I feel for you. What can I do to help? These are the prayers we offer as a congregation to God to help us with all of humankind. Amen. Join with me as we gather in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As it says in John 21, 15 to 17, Jesus calls us to feed his lambs and tend his sheep. Let us show and share his love through the offering and with our lives. Yeah. 
Our New Testament gospel scripture this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. It's a story you know well of the risen Lord. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana, and in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, have you no fish? Have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. And when they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have caught. So Simon Peter went abroad and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him yet a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you to where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the word of the Lord for us today. My message this morning comes from the Gospel according to John. And you heard it, and I wonder what all you did here. I know that when I went into the scripture, I heard new things, things that I had not thought of before. I heard among other things, that it takes Jesus to introduce something new to the disciples' routine. In this case, Jesus used his own idea of improved commercial fishing techniques as a spark to change and a widened strategy. He uses fishing for fish as a tool to teach how to fish for men and their souls. And the fishing for men will take more effort and creativity than handling tilapia, which is also known as St. Peter's fish. So that may have been part of the fish in the Sea of Tiberias. 
In our gospel passage this week, in which the resurrected Jesus appears, we do not see just a hero of the day, but the hero who came to save humanity. And that's all of humanity. Now by hero, I am thinking of someone who comes to save the innocent from really bad guys. The bad guys are the evil. In my childhood of watching Hollywood Westerns at our local town hall theater in Lebanon, Ohio, perhaps on a Saturday matinee, I saw many a Western hero. Or they were reading the biographies of Davy Crockett and Daniel Boone that we got from the local public library. Or watching Robin Hood and his merry men in Sherwood Forest on the local TV and battling Prince John and the evil sheriff. Those were all stories of good versus evil. Standard movie scripts, perhaps you can identify with some of those heroes. And we're still in that same dilemma of good versus evil. Now Elizabeth and I are not big fans of Hollywood movies these days, but the blockbuster films featuring heroes that came out of the comic books we read as children. You have Batman, in digital glory, of course. And there is new a movie called League of Super Pets. It describes, quote, Crypto, the super dog, and Superman. They are inseparable best friends and sharing the same superpowers and fighting crime in Metropolis, side by side. Sound familiar? Then there are the Spider-Man. There's a dozen new Spider-Man movies in the last 10 years. All had the same appeal to our hearts for a hero to rescue us from evil. Those heroes sparked my imagination as a kid. I wanted to have, be one of them, to stand for truth, justice, and the American way. That is ex an expression at least as old as Superman comic books, and I know it appeared in every Superman episode on television. Then I think of people like the Lone Ranger and his faithful companion Tonto, but Christ is far more than a superhero. He is the superhero of all superheroes. And unlike Robin Hood and Daniel Boone and the Lone Ranger, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, is still working, using us to battle against evil and to promote good and the gift of grace. You and I are part of his band. And our gospel, the resurrection, resurrected Jesus, is still at work with his own disciples. They are not quite ready to go out into the world. Class, in my opinion, is still in session with Jesus as the master teacher. And the teacher and the students know that there is danger right outside on this beach that they're, from which they've been fishing. And in that locked room, they know that there is evil and threats all about them. It's close at hand. They and their families will starve if they do not bring in fish in this particular uh, example. But Christ, the hero, steps in. You don't need to go to a local movie theater and hand over your money to recognize a hero when you see one. Hero is someone who operates with courage and does something out of the ordinary for the sake of others. Heroes consider the welfare of others before their own. And they know that the most important thing is not their fame, but their deeds and their intentions. And you all play a role as a hero in your own daily lives. That's what we see in the resurrected Jesus, I think is a real enduring hero. The one who died, then rose, showing himself to his disciples. Jesus is already shown to his disciples just days before in that locked room. Now he shows up to help seven. I don't know where the other four were, but he shows up to help the seven and to use fishing as an example of how to go out into this world to fish for the souls of men. These seven disciples have gone fishing, and they have been out all night trying to catch something and to earn their living. They're working the night shift, remember that? To make ends meet, despite their best efforts, they have caught nothing. The disciples are working, but there's no evidence of their work. Do you ever have a feeling like that? I know I had sometimes in my life. Often we feel like we have worked hard and done everything we can. 
We pull the night shift, we put in the overtime, paid or unpaid, but there's no evidence of what we have done. We pour our energy into a project, a relationship, a job, and still it seems like we're no better off than we were when we first began. Now, for you Sunday school teachers, I myself taught junior high boys for about 10 years. And for some times you would think, oh my goodness, am I making a difference in their lives, their spiritual lives? And I would see their parents kind of use me as a drop-off service. But I thought I do my work on behalf of them and their souls. And that was my payment. God sends us heroes. They don't come riding in on a Palomino like Roy Rogers and Trigger as much as I enjoyed horses as a child. And they usually don't have bows and arrows like Robin Hood and his merry men. What Christ did, what his disciples did, and what we ourselves, think of yourself, as those of you who have been parents, you know that we, effort, effort after effort, is to bring the good news to others maybe our children or grandchildren, maybe a neighbor, maybe students in a classroom. Jesus did the gospel lesson this morning, but we are to carry that gospel lesson out into this world. Disciples are working and they come up empty, and here comes a man. Spoiler alert, we all know it was Jesus. They did not initially. The man is on the shore cooking fish for them, just like the communion that we will have. It mentions the bread, and the fish, he fed his disciples, and he's still feeding us. But now Jesus, whom they recognize, tells them something, do something different. He says, cast your net on the right side. And really, we don't mean right side. If you have any knowledge of boats, you know that he's, he's telling people that they need to cast it on the port side. And Christ tells them to switch to the starboard. Seems like a simple change. And I think change is one of the things that traps us. We are so concerned about what we've always done. But on behalf of Jesus, we need to have a wider choice. We need to consider other options on how to take out from this fine sanctuary into the streets of Newport and a larger community the good news. So change is difficult, but you are the disciples. We are the disciples together, the strength. If he had not come to those men that day, their families might have gone hungry. And I think that is something that holds us back too. We think, oh, I want to do what I've always done. I understand it, but on behalf of Christ and that Holy Spirit, we need to go forward. Now, Elizabeth and older sister Barbara and I were fans of Cincinnati Shakespeare, and three times or two times we've seen Hamlet performed. And I remember that there's one of my favorite lines that I think works for us here today. Maybe you'll recall it. Horatio says to his friend, or Hamlet says to his friend Horatio, who is uncertain, there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Friends, there are more things in God's heaven and our earth than we ever dreamed of. And Christ is in the middle. He's right with us. He's right with us. So we gather here. We are worshiping here. And the purpose of, our, purpose of our worship is to go out there and share the good news. We have an awesome God, a heroic God, who helps us battle the evil that is all about us. Let us remember God and say, I have the ability to go out. This is the word I have for us today. Amen.
join with me in this benediction. Now is the time to get up and go. We leave in order to follow God into the world. Now is the time to enter the brokenness all around us. We go to bring the healing and peace of Jesus to all. Now is the time to bring words of hope and grace to all. The Spirit will give us the words we need in every moment. Amen.